Most churches talk about most churches talk about the past and look ahead to the return of Jesus. But what if a church started at the end and looked back? And what if this church was available not just to one community, but the whole world? Are you discouraged because churches neglect to teach and prepare for the end times, the restoration of Israel, the reality of Islam, and persecution? Are you currently seeking a church that embraces those concerns? Would you like to be a part of something that is spiritually groundbreaking and world-changing? We are the End Time Church, church Church. with the end in mind. Join us now at endtime.church. Welcome, my friends. It is End Time Church, back live. I am your, I don't know. Christopher Manti is just your buddy, uh, and we want to bring on to the stage at this time the real star of the show, Jake McCandless. <laughs> DJ, can, can we, is it, are, DJ, is it DJ, Pastor I'm DJ. Um, okay, That's whatever you say. Right? I mean, you, hey, <laughs> you're turning the turntables there for us. You put, you put the you put it wherever you want. Uh, MC, DJ. I don't know. Yeah, and by the way, I just lied. I, I I apologize. I repent for that. You are not the star of the show. Definitely not. Because I mean, Taryn, do that. no, Taryn definitely, absolutely, one thousand percent is definitely. We love her, and um, that's all you need to know. She's way more talented than us. Four well, let's pilots. go. Let's do the music. <laughs> hey, amen. Go. That's right. Uh, go. <laughs> this is this is a tight church. We're all over America right now and the world. So welcome to you. Say hello, uh, YouTube or Facebook, or hopefully you're on our uh, web page. Uh, at edtime.church slash live, and then you can create a little login and say hello and interact with us. Uh, and um, Pastor Anderson, I'm sure, is on the case as well. I didn't check in, but I'm sure he's there. And all that stuff, and get our app. That's it. The app. What's the, way, the total? What's the, the grand total? Uh, it's about almost 2,100. Incredible. Yeah, and uh, even if you speak Spanish, we still got you covered because we've got uh, some folks leading out on that. So we actually have two Spanish groups Spanish language groups right in the End Time Church app. So cool. Can't beat it, man. Incredible. Beat it. Incredible. I'm excited. Let's do let's do something. Let's say hello. I'm gonna go say hello to some folks. Bye. Virtually. Frisk <laughs> oh. <laughs> You you talk you about yourself. <laughs> say hello. You Virtual that. hugs, right? <laughs> Yeah, word up. So, uh, what day is today? October the twelfth. We've got um, something cool going on. I think in a lot of different places. This this topic should be interesting. I know we've got some feedback already. I already had to block someone, uh, which is fun. That was me. Uh, That's what yeah. happened. Is that why I couldn't reach you today? <laughs> not you blocked all. me. Is that what it is? Not you. Uh, no, no, no. Other folks too. Okay. Really, as we say, keep it in between the. The thirties or the twenties. This this person was in the parking lot, uh, so we don't want to really <laughs> engage in that. Anyway, so what's going on uh, down south, brother? Hey, uh, speaking of keeping between thirties, did you see the heartbreak uh, of the Arkansas game, dude? I was honestly, and nobody knows what we're talking about. But yeah. Jake's an Arkansas Razorback football fan, and they can't win for nothing. Dude, complete. Hey, we we beat Mississippi State. We had Auburn on the ropes. That's I was. They were you were winning, weren't you? Like late in the game. Yeah, w- one point, and like you know, it never happened. Someone spikes the ball to the back, which makes it a fumble. <laughs> but they blew the whistle, and there it. And they kicked the field goal and what? So it was oh. that was amazing. Yeah, I was almost gonna text you to say congratulations, and I said, now nah, wait, let me wait till see what happens. And then it happened, and I'm like, oh, I got to text him to make fun of him. No, no. So yeah, when you say between the thirties, you know, it's just it's been it's been a heartbreak here uh in, in Arkansas. So so I'm on a on a board for a student ministry on the campus of the University of Arkansas. And one of the ways we get our funding is through uh providing parking spots for the games. But the games have been so bad the last two years and attendance has been so bad that financially we're struggling. Because we can't get people to park and or not, there's no need for the park in the lot. So, uh, isn't that funny? I mean, football game hurting ministry. Yeah. And I always found, uh, like, you know, I, I guess maybe this is just a South thing, but 
uh, you could always tell the attitude at church. And th- this is sad, right? Somebody's going to say this is t- at- terrible. But you could always tell the attitude how it was going to be whether your team won or lost. Uh, you know, if it was a big win that Saturday night, this is going to be a good at- attitude. Everyone's happy. It's true. And it's not just in your part. Of, yeah, it's not just in your neck of the woods either. Not not to say that I haven't been to your neck of the woods during an <laughs> Eagles game and, you know, some people may be preoccupied as well. We have like a courthouse in the Eagles stadium because the fans get so out of hand. Is that correct? <laughs> Everyone gets to throw that one out there. And it may be true. <laughs> but the fact <laughs> remains <laughs> that it's wisdom, okay? It's wisdom. Uh, Simply because you root fans, right? read it. What's that? The rudest fans, right? I, mean, uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I've been there. I, I've been to New York. You know, I've, I've been to Giants and Jets and stuff like that. And it's to, to me, it's exactly the same. But who knows? Whatever. Yeah, Boston. But here at End Time Church, you're not going to find that. No, that's right. No. That's right. Uh, you know, so I, I. Uh, you know, we mentioned it over and over again. Uh, children's book, Jesus and the White Horse, has been out, mm-hmm. and uh, so we we've, we've been in this campaign of you know trying to get it out there. Uh, but the, the feedback, one thing I've learned, it, which we we've seen in the app, we've seen through End Time Church already. I know you've seen with Wings of the Eagle. Uh, there is a hunger out there uh, for the truth, and you know we may think we're alone on an island but we're not and i hope that's what you're finding here at end time church is at least if we're you're on the island you're not alone uh you know many feeling like you do uh but then just the uh, confusion um you know and then many times hearing you know the lack of necessity of talking about the the end and um so you know it's been a very interesting uh, journey today the uh the feedback message was uh so it's an image of jesus coming back uh this particular moment he's coming to get his people and he's smiling and so uh they felt like it needed to be more blood and guts you know uh jesus wouldn't be smiling so uh but i mean that was mild you know it's been it's been fun but i mean it just shows you know i think when you put the end in mind like we're doing uh you know we're not all end times but when you have that perspective it really uh, makes a difference in how you live your day live I your think, life now. yeah I, I agree obviously taryn agrees probably everyone watching agrees or or is on that road right to realization yeah um, oh and, and so man this is also i had any church this week so uh we're semi quarantine-ish uh, what whatever that is long story but uh waiting to know so we, we weren't with fellowship Sunday, so looking forward to fellowship tonight. Uh, yeah, it's uh, you, you can't live without the body, without our family, right? That's true. And by the way, hello to all uh, those of you who are checking in on the site in the chat. Thank you very much, uh, brothers and sisters. We got Robbie and Leah, praise God. Love you, wow. people. Yeah, uh, obviously, Pastor Anderson on the case in there, and Matt Weimer, a whole bunch of dudes and dudettes who we love, and new folks I see on YouTube checking in from Indonesia. Whoa, Man, that, cool. Uh, Remy looks, based on your name, doesn't look like, looks like you're from Europe somewhere, which is awesome. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, anyway, we, this is this. I love that. Just having that, just having that ability, and um, you know, this medium to actually be faced. Could we not also say uh, with the world in mind? You know, I, I think that's one of the factors too, and I, I'm sure this can come out in your message tonight uh, to some degree. Is you know, having the end in mind, also we're thinking as we get to the throne, uh, that that image of every tribe, every tongue, every nation gathered around the throne in the, in the the age to come, uh, and so that worldwide view. I love it, love it to be a part of that. Hey, uh, so something fascinating. I mean, maybe everybody knew this. I'd love to hear if, if everybody knew this. I never put put this together, but that statement that they're going to be every tribe, every nation, every tongue. And that projecting it, you know, at, at the, the frame it's put, let's just say afterlife. Uh, but then we get the nations, all, all those things. Is the idea that we'll be keeping to some degree our ethnicity, our our race in the the age to come, which is, I think, really, really fascinating. And maybe I'm the only one that just never put that together. Uh, so that's what we need, this worldwide view. Amen, brother. I mean, I'm sure you're not the only one. 
Uh, I mean, I, I had a crazy old teacher who actually did mention that like That's awesome. 20 years ago, but, uh, but yeah, I was like, Oh, well, who cares? But, but you know, again, God does things for reasons, right? And he, That's right. he makes ways because he wants right. to. And and you know, I always thought in terms of missions, now you know going to the nations but uh the, the fact of hey that's you know i guess it goes a lot to say you know god's placed us where we're at and uh which probably goes a lot the message hey i'm gonna take i'm gonna keep stealing parts of your message so i'm gonna get out of this we amen. all need to get out of this let us pray and let's get into some time of worship what do you think amen let's do it okay uh father thank you for those gathered around the world uh today and those who will be watching later, Father, I pray that through this intersection tonight, we can have a chance to draw close to you. And, Lord, you would uh, you'd work in our hearts, give us guidance, uh, give us instruction, give us motivation and encouragement. Uh, Father, tonight is yours, and uh, we look forward to being a part of it, seeing you move, and letting you move through us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Sis Taryn, did you want to have any kind of introduction for what we're about to hear? Yeah, because it's... Um wicked weird compared to what normally it is um so yeah my husband and i went on our we go on an annual trip to a cabin in vermont um that his family owns and um we decided to do like a stomp thing with kitchen utensils and part fireplace pokers and stuff um (laughs) did you just share that chris yeah yes ignore that like i can share it (laughs) I think I know how to do it um, for once. But, yeah, so anyway, um, we were able to, like, we used our two cell phones, just total improv thing, and um, record. I recorded layers of vocals, too. Um, but it's just, like, a really strange thing compared to normal. So it was really fun. Um, okay, I'm going to share this. And I'm going to... Hmm. Yeah, Chris, maybe you should. Roger that. Stand by. Thank you. <laughs> oh, hmm. oh, hmm. Thank you. 
Oh, 
Amazing, amazing, amazing. About 90% of what you just heard was one person. And uh, I'm just so blessed to have Taryn around. And so thank God for her and for you, Pastor Jay. Thank you for coming back. I'm going to get my worship on here. I was so worried when she said, you know, in time church, be careful. There's a warning. This is something strange. Uh, because, you know, I feel like we've, you know, we, we mastered the strange. So, <laughs> Nothing the, to worry about. Her, that was awesome. Yeah, truly, truly. Was. And, and, you know, we, we started the service with a lot of stuff, but uh, somewhere in there we mentioned uh, the worldwide aspect. And I, I, to me that connected with that. And uh, I think also as we talk about this subject tonight, I think we're looking at 
how we personally would deal with uh, persecution. Uh, but as we champion our brothers and sisters around the world who are facing that same thing, uh, you know, in all different cultures, all different worship styles, uh, isn't it going to be awesome uh, when we have a worship set in the kingdom to come hmm. uh, made up of all different kinds of music? Can't wait. Uh, Chris, I want to pray for you, and we'll get into this message. Right. Uh, Father, thank you again that we can all gather. Lord, I pray tonight that you give us instruction on what we may face and when we do, how we should handle it. Well, I love you. Speak to us now. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen, brother. Thank you, friend. And you, friends, welcome to one and all. Thank you so much. Yeshua does love you. He loves all of us. And um figured I'd break out this shirt today, which I've had for many years now. Voice of the Martyrs created this years ago. Here we are. Christians were persecuted, and it shows like an old scene of the Romans or whatever. Uh, but then in the back it says, today. And that's what we're facing. Um, Pastor Jake, did you need to come on and say something? Or are you good? Okay, cool. Um, anyways, it, yeah, it's an important issue and something that I think we've um, we don't think about enough. We don't. I don't think we hear about it enough for sure from the pulpits of the world. Uh, but it is something that's present and it's real, and it's something we should invest time. Um, in prayer about time in uh, just preparing our hearts for our minds, our families. It's just very, very worthwhile uh, because it's so underappreciated. Right. Um, so let's, let's get into it tonight. And I know um, what's the, Oh, thank you, Gerardo. F- Facebook ended. Well, that's not good. That's all right though. We've got our, We've got our own feed here, so we should be good to go. All right. For those who have seen that picture, uh, it freaked out my younger son earlier today. And it's actually a picture of Eve, if you couldn't figure it out, um, in the garden with the serpent Satan in her ear. Very seductively. And that's what Paul tells us, right? Beguiled her <clears throat> with the lies. Um, so let's get into it. Even the title probably provokes a response in us, in you, and I know a couple of folks have commented already, and that's good. We do want to be affected by it, right? We don't want to be cold to it or, or hard-hearted. Um, but how exactly should be we be treating this. So let's take a look at what the Bible says, because that's all we should really care about, right? What does the Holy Spirit have to say about this? Not what I want, not what you want, not what feelings dictate, not what our nation might be going through, but what doth the Lord say? So let's see right now. Amen. Here's the key verse I want you to make a note of tonight. If nothing else, remember Acts 5.39. If, of course, this is Gamaliel talking to the leaders, Sanhedrin. If it is of God, talking about Christianity in general, right? This crazy claim that Jesus, Yeshua, has risen from the dead. If it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. Remember that all night. It's going to be very helpful. Um, Before we get rolling here, just a couple of things that are going to dovetail into this. 
Uh, last Saturday, we had a urgent service <clears throat> with Pastor Anderson and myself, mostly Pastor Anderson. I encourage and invite you to check that out. Uh, it's still recorded. You can go on endtime.church slash live and go back uh, two sessions. And there it is. It's also on our YouTube channel. So go check it out. It is well worth it. And it's about being prepared and share it. Okay because it's still an urgent message right now in October and November. We really think it's going to be val- valuable, and there's even a download for you in it, so go watch it and share it. Uh, as well, we are going to go ahead with uh we think is a Holy Spirit idea, which is on Election Day, which is only three days, uh, excuse me, three, three, God forbid, three weeks from tomorrow, uh, End Time Church will actually be opening a special a prayer room or a hangout room or or just a be real and, and shed tears or whatever else happens room um, on Tuesday the 3rd to everyone. It will be open to all. So stay tuned for more details about that. And the way things are looking, it may need to be opened even longer than one day. But anyway, this all kind of goes together, which is proper preparation for coming persecution, right? And as I think folks have already, there's tons and tons and tons of scripture on this, and uh, Tim and Darcy Gill, um, Brother Les Young, all these these guys are have been through these uh, scriptures and have been through it in life, right? Especially Tim and Darcy. They have actually, they, they work for Voice of the Martyrs. They've traveled the world, literally, serving the persecuted church and serving the widows of martyrs and so forth the families of those who've given their life for Jesus. So they know what of what this is and of what God truly demands. So does God want us to resist or rejoice in persecution? Now we should know, we've highlighted this many times, Christian persecution is at the highest levels ever recorded since the original believers, since the original first century church. And more than likely, it is coming for you and your house. So what is the correct response? And again, what does that what does this image have to do with anything? What does Satan and Eve whispering in your ear have to do with this? Everything, I think. And for example, to wit, I present to you this. What is this? This is a person on Twitter yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. It could have been two days ago, but I always look for confirmations out, you know, from the Lord, like, am I doing the right message this week? And, yep, this was it. Here's what this individual says. This is a Christian, obviously an American. He says... The church, maybe I should have blotted out his name. I apologize. Not, don't mean to embarrass the guy. The church is symbolic to the five wise virgins, he says, who are ready when the Lord comes. The persecuted Christians are symbolic to the five foolish virgins who are not ready when the Lord comes. So he says, There is a spiritual reason Jesus gave us this parable to warn us to be ready. Wow. Wow. When I read that, I see that. Is that clear? I see the devil literally whispering in the bride of Christ's ear to drag her away from the truth. It's, 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 it doesn't make me happy. It doesn't make me excited, uh, to read such a thing from a believer. The foolish virgins are the ones who are persecuted. Yeah. So what does the Bible say here? Let's take a look. I'm not going to post all these, but please open up your Bibles digitally or paper to these following verses or study them later. Remember, keep in mind Acts 5 the whole time. If, if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. Here's 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 
says this, and you yourselves, Paul talking to the believers in Thessalonica, you yourselves became imitators of us, the ones who preached the gospel to you, the apostles, Paul, etc., and of the Lord. You became imitators of us and of the Lord when, in spite of severe persecution, you welcomed the message with joy from the Holy Spirit. As a result, you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. Severe persecution, you became imitators of us, the original apostles, and Jesus himself when you were persecuted severely. You welcomed it with joy because you knew it was from God. And as a result, became an example to all believers. Then in chapter 3, he follows up, Paul does with this. And we sent Timothy, our brother and God's co-worker in the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you concerning your faith. So once you believe, you have to be strengthened and encouraged. So that... No one will be shaken by these afflictions, persecutions, troubles, pain, suffering. For you yourselves know that we were appointed to this. We are appointed to this, present tense. We are appointed to be afflicted. In fact, when we were with you, we told you in advance that we were going to experience affliction. And as you know, it happened for this reason. When I could no longer stand it, I also sent him to find out about, sent him Timothy, to find out about your faith. Where was your faith? Fearing that the tempter had tempted you and that our labor might be for nothing. There's so much said in that one sentence. Afflictions. You know you have to expect it. You know we are going through it, and we know we're going to continue to go through it. But don't be shaken by it. Don't let your faith wane. Don't leave the faith. Because we know Satan, the tempter, will tempt you. In what? Through affliction, suffering, and persecution to tempt you to say your faith isn't real. Because if it was, you wouldn't be persecuted at all. God would do something about it. God would not allow this to happen. God would save you from this. That's what Satan does. And that's what he will do to the church a million times more in these last days. Convinced of it. That our labor might be for nothing. What does he mean by that? Our labor in giving you the gospel, in going through all this stuff just to present the word of God to you that you might believe and be saved. Why would it be for nothing? Because they would leave the faith. That's not a small issue. What's that? Christians who are in a church, even Paul himself would disciple them and they could leave the faith? Yep. Well, guess what? Uh, I mean, I credit the Lord with you know, giving me some kind of gift of teaching, and, and I certainly credit him for Pastor Jake and, and Pastor Anderson and, and all the teachers and wonderful leaders that we have here, but none of us are Apostle Paul level. So if that was a danger with his folks, his disciples, his children, so to speak. What does it say about us in our world? Our church situation. Okay, now look at First Peter chapter 1, verse 6. In this, you greatly rejoice. Remember the question, what do we do? Do we resist it or do we rejoice in it? In this, greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, 
though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the return, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Testing through fire by various trials to prove your faith is genuine that at the return of Jesus you would be found praising him and honoring him. Not have a false, faulty, um, weak faith. Uh, we don't need to be genius or any kind of Bible scholar to know that how do you um, test gold? You put it in the fire <laughs> to see if it's real, to get the junk off, to make sure it's legit. All right. that's That's fine. That's fine. You say, what's the big deal? Wow, aren't we fighting? We're not fighting against God here. Before I go to that slide, I'm going to make it real for you all right now, and it doesn't matter what country you're in. It doesn't matter what country you're in. This is pretty consistent around the globe, around the body of Christ. There are two basic ways you look at your faith. Either you're coming to be persecuted once you believe, or you're going to be blessed and protected by your government. Let's just say, let's just do an exercise. Let's say, and I know many of us here know what I'm going to say, or know what I mean by this, the socialist. The socialists are coming, the socialists are coming. I'm not a socialist, okay? I don't believe in any of these isms and, and political systems or, or uh, economic ways of doing things, whatever. It means nothing to me, truly. Um, but years ago, I had a, back when I was on message boards before websites became a big thing, anyways, my little icon was a little thing that said anti-socialist. Ha, ha, ha. Um, okay, so let's just say socialist takeover. America or elsewhere, okay? Anywhere. Let's say you're not in that position. All of a sudden, oh, the, the left has taken over the, the godless communists. How exactly will this be bad? From God's point of view. I challenge you with that. How is it bad if the socialists take over America or anywhere else? Or the uh, Islamists take over a, a quote-unquote Christian country? What is God, from God's point of view, why is that bad? And what is he after? What is he after in that? In his bride. In his bride. That's the main point. Now I ask you this, are you sure, are we sure, we are not fighting against God? Aren't we in America, especially, actively trying to resist, stop, delay, or blunt the persecution against the church? I know we are. You know we are. And guys, I get, I we had justifications a mile long, okay? I, I know, I know them all. I used to believe a lot of them. You all know my story. Those who don't, we'll tell it another time in, in the political realm. But we, are, we absolutely are trying to resist falling into persecution. Don't we say those who want to, quote, protect our religious liberties are the godly ones? Aren't we saying that? Sure we are. Aren't we telling everyone who listen? If the Democrats, socialists, leftists, whatever our country is calling them, take over, if they take over, it will be so very bad 
for us, the church. And again, I'm not trying to, you know, insult anything. I get it. It makes sense logically if you're looking at it from earthly, the earthly point of view. Totally makes sense. You know, why not? Wouldn't it be better to have protections? Would it be better to have the majority? Wouldn't it be better to be able to exercise your faith freely? Sounds good. Sounds great. But is that what God wants? Is that what God ever wants is the point. What does God say? What is he after? Look, I have refined you but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. I will act for my own sake. Indeed, my own. For how can I be defiled? I will not give my glory to another. I will not. I will put you into the fiery furnace of affliction, pain, suffering, persecution, martyrdom, to refine you because why? You're giving my glory to another. Partially, right? You have to be tested. You're found wanting. Maybe. I don't know, but God does it for his reasons. He's after a pure and spotless bride of Christ. Amen? Look at it this way, guys. Before that. Has, if, if we're looking at it, Again, as an American, I can't help this. In an election coming up in three weeks, if a certain party wins or a certain party loses, as though it's a life or death situation for the church. Has the church really? Is that what we're talking about? Is that what we're going to judge it on? Is this, is this a danger? If, if, if we're in more persecution? Has the church failed? In North Korea, in Saudi Arabia, in Syria, in Egypt, in Nigeria, in China, in Armenia. What did the Armenians do to deserve this what's happening to them now? Didn't they elect good enough leaders? Don't they have a strong enough military to defend themselves? Don't doesn't isn't God gonna bless them if they just have godly leadership and enact Christian laws and Whatever. God forbid. God forbid we would ever think such a silly thing that the church do- the church doesn't fail. I, Jesus, will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Period. 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 What is, I'm sorry, is, the, is, is a communist or a Muslim government all of a sudden more strong than God? Is it more powerful than hell itself? Of course not. So how can we say the church is not prevailing if, we, if we're if we under certain governments or under pressure or persecution? There's nothing to do with that. If anything, it's the norm. It's the norm for that pressure to come because you're being a pain in the butt of hell, (laughs) right? The gates of hell are defensive. It's not an offensive weapon. A gate is to protect your city. If the gates of hell won't prevail against the church, that means the church is to be on offense in the spirit, giving the gospel to those who've never heard it, bringing healing, deliverance, gifts of the spirit, on and on and on to a lost and dying world, to the ones who are deceived, to the ones who are, yes, enemies of the cross. That's all of us, guys, before we were saved. 
to the enemies of the gospel, even right to the enemies. This is what Paul is talking about with his churches. It's like, uh, this is normal. And if, if you're not ready for it, if you don't believe it's normal, if you don't think it's coming, you're going to stumble and you're going to fall. And you're going to fall away from the faith. Guys, whatever's coming to the United States in this next month or two or three, we're not looking at real persecution right now. We have no idea what actual persecution is like in the Western world. We don't. We have no idea because we're so spoiled and lazy. And we're so used to not having to deal with it that any, any pushback in any way, all of a sudden, we're persecuted. I don't care what your opinion is on COVID-19, wearing a mask due to a pandemic, and it, yes, it's a real pandemic. We all know that now the president has it, okay? Had it, has it, whatever. The first family gets it. Anyone can get it. Wearing mask due to a pandemic is not persecution. Nobody's asking you to wear a mask to defy Jesus. Having church buildings closed. Now listen, having church buildings closed or at a lower capacity is not persecution. You might have an argument about that if it was just churches, but the mosque and the temple and the Buddhists and, and the New Agers, and they could all meet unrestricted, but only the churches were restricted? Maybe, but it's not that way. Every stadium in America can't even fill their seats because of these same regulations, and they're, most of them are outdoors. I think the NBA finals had to be, they had to be in a bubble for months on end. It couldn't have any fans in there. They weren't persecuting the NBA or the NHL. Point made. And also, please, please, this is also not persecution, being treated unfairly by non-Christians in the media or on social media. <laughs> what do you expect? A fair shake? This is what drives me crazy. I mean, everybody, people I trust, Michael Brown, we love Michael Brown. I don't mean to drag him into this, but he's been on our show. He's been on our air. He's been at End Time Church. We love, I love him to death. He's so awesome. He's amazing. He's talking about, he knows we're going to face the Antichrist. He knows we're going to face the tribulation. He knows that. But one thing that always gets me about him, he's always complaining about hypocrisy of, of being treated unfairly by whoever. Why? It's, they're doing what they do. They're lost. They don't know any better. I expect to be treated unfairly. This is like elemental stuff. Anyway, maybe that's more personal issue with me. Um, before we leave that, what is what is actual persecution then? Again, like Jake was saying in the beginning, if we can't ever stop acknowledging the fact that we are one body of Christ throughout the world. There is no American church of any denomination. There's born again and not born again. Whether you're in America, Europe, Africa, Asia, the Middle East, wherever. It's one body of Christ. Born again or not. That's the only division. The only thing God can see. He will see. Amen? Amen? So if you're under Sharia law, if you're under being attacked by jihadists every day, if you're thrown into a gulag, if it's illegal in your country to evangelize, which it is in a lot of countries, it's illegal to, it, by the way, even in Israel, basically, it's close to it, even there. It's illegal to have a Bible. It's your family members are killing you. Family members are killing each other just for following Jesus, kicking you out of the house. You can't work. You can't get a home. They're actually, your own family will kill you if you follow Jesus. That is real persecution, friends. So please, enough of this. My church is closed, therefore I'm being persecuted. Junk. Because of COVID. Not because they hated Christians. Good Lord. All right. 
So I think we got to wake up, guys. We have to wake up because it's not just some random thing happening. This is a spirit over the United States. It's a spirit over Western Europe. It's a spirit over many nations that would tell us that Satan himself is telling us to resist persecution. Wake up. He's t- it's the same peace and safety junk that he's been pulling on Israel uh, from 3,000 years ago. And that Paul warns about in the end days. Peace and safety, peace and safety. Nothing to worry about here. Don't worry about it. We're good to go. God is God. Is, God is protecting us. We don't have to worry about that stuff. It's the same, same egregious error that Israel herself makes again at the end. They make the covenant with death and the grave, death and Sheol, because they think it will keep them from terror. They keep think it will keep them alive. They think God is blessing them. God, God will, won't allow this. We see Ezekiel 38 and 39. He's going to come defeat them. They don't think they're, it's even possible that they would be killed. Don't fall into that trap. Because if you are, we're worshiping an idol. That's not God. That's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible will allow you to be hurt and suffer and be persecuted for his name. He will allow you to die, to be murdered. He will allow your family to be hurt. That's not ungodly. That's Christianity. Throughout history. If we resist persecution coming even either now or when it actually comes. We are fighting against God. God says this, I form the light. I create the darkness. I make peace and I create calamity, evil, disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. Woe to him. Judgment is coming to him who strives with his maker. Shall the clay say to him who forms it, what are you making? Or shall your handiwork say he has no hands? He's saying, you guys are being ridiculous. Don't even think about striving with me or fighting me. What do we have to remember? Acts 539, if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you be found to be fighting against God. There it is. Woe, judgment is coming to him who fights with God. Put these two together, and what do you get? You get, if you resist persecution coming in November or wherever and whenever, if you resist it, if you put up a fight, you're fighting God himself. And that puts judgment on you from him. Hey, he's like, hey, guys, persecution, affliction, fiery testing of your faith. That's not judgment. I'm not mad. That's just the way it is. But woe to you if you think you can overthrow me and change the way I do things. I don't change. He said, read Isaiah over and over and over. And over. I'm the one who doesn't change. I'm the one who said the end from the beginning. I'm the one who did this. I'm the one who created that. Me, 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 I, the Lord, I, Jesus, don't fight him. Judgment is coming for us for resisting persecution. We've done it for a long, long time in the Western world. Okay. I can't speak for y'all in the rest of the world who's doing it right, but we're not doing it right here. We're resisting persecution. We're fight. We're trying to vote against it. We're trying to. We want. We want more time, Lord. More time. We want. Uh, we want to delay. We want a window of opportunity. We want a revival. Oh, we want revivals all day long. But we don't want the truth. We need to repent now of this. And just, it's so simple. Just take to heart the pure. Words of our beautiful King Jesus. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. And this is not man's righteousness. This is not a good cause. Okay. This is Christ's faith. This is for being a Christian. Blessed are those who are persecuted for believing in me. 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say, blessed are you. What's that, Jesus? Blessed are you when they persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake, for the name of Jesus Christ. That's what it's talking about. For my sake, you are blessed if they do that. Rejoice, rejoice. Should we rejoice or resist? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. Not on earth, in heaven. After the persecution is done with you, your reward is great. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Rejoice, friends. When this actually comes, and it might come for you or your family, when it actually comes, you'll know it. It's not an election. It's not some kind of policy shift. It's like jihad. It's like gulags. It's like that. Family members, etc. But take heart, guys. This is what happened to God's very, very precious chosen prophets themselves. The ones he spoke direct to. Direct. It's very, a very good place. I think basically what he's saying is, right now, to you, you in the West, you, everyone who's watching this, especially us Americans, and I'm one of them, I'm as guilty as anyone, choose your kingdom. Because you can't have both. can't have both. You can't have this land that protects you from persecution and be rejoicing in the fact that you are persecuted because they don't go together. What does Hebrews 12 say? See to it that you do not refuse to listen to him who is speaking to you now. For if those, the sons of Israel, the children of Israel, if those did not escape when they refused to listen to him who warned them on the earth, revealing his will, how much less will we escape if we turn our backs on him who warns from heaven? Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude. Cannot be shaken. Cannot be shaken. It doesn't matter what government is. It doesn't matter what leaders say. It doesn't matter what they do to your body or your home or your job or your internet connection or your family. It is unshakable if you live there that kingdom cannot be shaken. Let us then show gratitude and offer to God a pleasing service and acceptable worship. What does Romans 12 one say that acceptable worship is to God? Our bodies. Our body is the acceptable sacrifice to God. Pleasing service and acceptable worship with reverence and awe, fear of the Lord, for our God is indeed a consuming fire. And like Peter says, he will throw that gold into the fire to purify it. See if the faith is genuine. And like Paul warned those Thessalonica and elsewhere. Expect it. Because only Satan will come to you and say it's not coming. Only Satan will come to you and say you don't have to endure that. Only Satan comes to say resist persecution. God wouldn't do that. God says yes. Yes I do. I will definitely allow that. Why? 
my apostles themselves were allowed to go through it, were given the honor of going through it. I myself, the Lord, went through it. Why are you any better than me? Clearly, we're not. Servant is not greater than his master. And guys, Jesus is our master. If he in, if he went through it, we can expect the same. And I didn't even really even touch on scriptural backup for this. I just I just think it's so um, massively important that we put it into context. That um, it's real life and has real consequences right now, right now in October the 12th, right now, the next three weeks um, are going to be a real sifting, fiery time and beyond that. Okay, I'm not pretending to know what will happen after that, but the chaos is going to happen. Okay, chaos. Uh, and the world is going to go crazy on itself. And um, there's every reason to believe it's going to get very different, shockingly different, even for those of us who are accustomed to peace and safety all day long and to never having to deal with anything. And we think our church is being half closed or is persecution or you can't make me wear a mask. And all of a sudden we, we we're feeling our, our oats and like, you know, tough guy, uh, alpha male stuff, which is garbage, by the way. <sighs> Don't resist it. Am I preaching to myself? Of course I am. Of course I am. I'm preaching to myself big time. I, I, I'm not, I don't think I'm ready at all. I don't think, uh, my family's ready. I don't, I don't pretend that's true. I don't want to put that out to you like I'm trying to, t- you'll get up to my level and you'll think it's great. I don't, I just know what the Lord is about. And I know what he says on the topic and I know what he's shown, not only myself, but many of you, that this is something that you're going to have to get ready for because it will test your faith. If we're not even thinking about it, if we're not hearing about it from our pulpits, whether it be this one, your local one or anywhere else, we're not going to be ready. It's not an automatic, especially if you're used to thinking a certain way about how God operates and how he is, and you don't bother to think about, hey, wow, all this stuff happened in the past to, to his people that he called his chosen? His Christians, even? In the New Testament? New Testament's littered with it. Fox's Book of Martyrs, and all the way down, right? We're in a very precarious situation, not because things are going to get worse necessarily or harder for Christians, but because we Christians aren't ready for it to be harder. The church is going to bleed. And I don't mean just literally our bodies, but members, okay? The members of the body will fall off because they have no clue about this. And they have no interest. Let's be honest. We have no interest, a lot of us, in participating in martyrdom or persecution. We just are out of here. No thank you. And that makes me um, kind of sad, kind of fearful um, for what uh, what we're going to have to experience because like with the ch- just raising a child, you know, being a parent, um, you know, the more times that you go back to them and try to teach them a lesson and the more they don't learn it, the harder you have to be. So pray on that. Um, I know I'm going to be, you know, we'll join you in it. But it's right around the corner, guys, really truly is and um i'm glad that you all are with 
us in this and with me in this. And we're going to need each other. I mean, we need the Lord, obviously, most of all, but there's also a purpose in him calling all of us together. There's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you're watching us right now. Whether it's, you know, on this Monday night or afterwards, it's a very specific reason. And the Holy Spirit's looking to teach us, edify us, build us up in him to let you know, hey, guys, you're actually dead already if you're in me, right? Uh, that whole baptism thing, you're supposed to be gone and not care about what happens to your body. And you're, you're supposed to love me more than your friends and family. Oh, that's the one thing before I, and this is it, I promise. If um, the the only real persecution that I've ever experienced, and it's very low level, okay, very low level, uh, and maybe a lot of you have shared this story or have the same story, which is, you know, dear, dear friends um, from my past that I've made uh, over the years as a young man and growing up and we really had a great bond and, you know, we, our children were born and they, uh, these, you know, friends would, we, we were doing life together. Okay. Now they were not believers. And at a certain point, a couple of years ago, it just, the only reason it happened is because I believe what I did because I was a Christian and my wife was, and now we're cut off. That hurts, right? They don't talk to us. They don't, they don't hang around our kids. They don't, um, just cold turkey, you know? And so that's, that's a taste of what persecution is. But again, there was no punitive action beyond that, right? They didn't actually try to come attack us for it or murder us. Um, but that will happen. So just prepare your mind for that. Amen. All right. Yeah, man, I'm just trying to like Gerardo. Thanks, brother. I'm just trying to be real, man. This is we got to be real all over the place. We got to be extra, extra real with each other 24 seven nowadays. And uh, we just can't can't deny it anymore, guys. Um, I don't want to hold it off. I don't. Can I just say this, Pastor Jake? I, I, I don't I don't want to. Is this bad? To, I don't think this is bad. I don't want to be any more delays. I don't want to 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 have any more respites. I don't want to have any more extra time. Let's get on with it. If right, if if we really want the kingdom of God, if we really want the Lord to come, if we really want these things, let's just go. Even if I'm not ready yet, let's. I'll. I'll it'll be harder, but let's do it. You know, let's just do it. Let's get it. Let's get it on. Um. I want the Lord more than anything, and so do you. So let's just, no more delay. It there should be delay no longer, right? That's what Revelation says. So let's let's just do it. All right, amen. Abomination of desolation is not going to happen tomorrow, no. Anyway, rescue me. Rescue me, Pastor Jake. Uh, anyway, brother, oh, I'm sorry. But yeah, so I should probably pray at the end of that thing, but, I mean, it's just, it, it all has been said, and... um. We, we've just, I don't know. I don't know. It's not over. I could have done that for like an hour or more, but I think we do have to focus on this a little bit, right? A little bit. Oh, you're, you're muted brother. Now you're still muted. I'm sure it's awesome. <laughs> One more time. Re replug in. Uh anyway. Yeah, you're you're still muted. I don't know. And I can't unmute you from here. It's a fantastic uh reply, whatever it is. Did let's just do that. There he is, you're good. There you are. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let, let, let's just pray. <laughs> no, no, I want to share this. Of course, it's dear to my heart, something dear to my heart. Um, you know, we, we love and want to help in time church. We want to help everybody we can prepare. We want to be those that are putting the, the air mask on in the plane and handing it to someone else and helping it put on. And we want to get up and go help everybody put one on. Uh, but one thing I was thinking about, we talk a lot about preparing, you know, for this, but I don't think we're ever going to feel like we're ready. You know, I don't think, and I, I know this 
happened in my life with kids. I, Christopher, that's probably you too. I mean, it, I mean, we, we had this conversation, you know, me and my wife were like, we want to be, you know, have this going. We want to get this going. We want to have, be ready here before we have kids type thing. Mm-hmm. But you're never going to get to that. You're never going to get to that, that point that you, you set. You're never going to get there. Uh, but at the same time, uh, and I think that's here. I think we may have these goals and we need to be shooting for where we want to get to be prepared for persecution and these tough things. But we have to realize, even if we're here, if we're seeking the Lord, if we're walking with him, he's going to bring us through. I mean, what I found amazing, I mean, this has been on my, my radar for six, seven years. And the last, you know, and when COVID hit, you know, I've been so concerned, you know, the church isn't ready, all, all these things, people aren't preparing. Uh, but I was really shocked to some level uh, how fast some acclimated to it. But then at the same time, you still had those who were just left in the dust and caught unprepared. And we're going to continue to see the fallout from that. And mm-hmm. again, that was just a little little bit of taste of difficulty and sure wasn't persecution. Uh, so I don't want us to beat ourselves up, but at the same time, push ourselves to prepare. Does that make sense? Because I think it's easy to just think, yeah, I'm never going to get there. I just forget it, you know. Uh, but but let's keep moving ahead with that. And I want to say if you're here and you hear listening to this message and you're receiving this message, you're already many steps ahead. Uh, the, the, you know, kind of the, and, and Pastor, uh, man, I may share this next week. I may walk through the, the six areas that we've been focusing on. We, we need to prepare spiritually six steps. And, uh, but the first one is, it's just knowing the warning, knowing it could be us. And, uh, as, the old G.I. Joe uh, cartoons and Transformer cartoons would end with knowing's half the battle. And I think that's the case. Powerful message tonight. Challenging words. Uh, I hope I hope we take it to heart. But at the same time, let's realize, hey, God is, you know, we also, the Holy Spirit would just kick in some extra juice. You know, I'm the guy who's begging you to prepare and do all this. But at the same time, we still have the Holy Spirit to bring us through. Amen. It's a great point, by the way, uh, about the kids. That's exactly how it is for those of you who don't have children or you think, well, if we just get to this level or, you know, we're just going to make this much money first or get the house or whatever your goal is. I mean, that's all well and good and fine to have and think about. But at the end of the day, you're never going to be ready as you think you should be. You're just going to have to go through it. So I I just echo that. man. Then there are those who are in the parent situation and they just leave their kids and so, you know, there, and, and that's what we're, we don't want, right? I mean, you're never going to be completely ready, but you still need to be striving to be ready. Yeah. And I think in that striving is where you're actually found ready. Because uh, if you ever got to a point where you felt like you were ready and you just kick back, like, I don't know how many of you actually, you know, are physically preppers, uh, but you can't get to the point where you say, hey, I've got a cellar for, full of food. I'm I'm good. No, you've got to continue to work the thing because you got to make sure your food's not hmm. expiring. You've got to continue rotate stuff out. I mean, it's it's a never ending thing. So if you ever get to the point and just say, "Hey, I've got everything I need. I'm good," spiritually, that's a dangerous point as well. Uh, but but keep progressing, keep striving. Amen. We can mm-hmm. go all night, like we said. We and we we might. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm going to post the after party link in the uh, after end time church page itself. Sorry to YouTube and Facebook and all, but uh, we do have a password on it now. So I do want to put that in there and then we can continue for a little bit, at least till kids have got to go to bed. So want, uh, yeah, man, pray us on out of here. Uh, I'll post that and we'll, we'll, Hey, how was you pray? I pray twice tonight. Not that oh, I right. pray, right. but I think, uh, that's fine. I deserve that. Yeah. I don't want to be just, yeah. Hey, Amen. Okay. Uh, right, Lord, uh, God help us. Uh, as folks are saying, um, you, you love your children more than we know. And, um, you know, as more than one person has said tonight, we, there's really nothing. We're never going to be totally ready, but you will see us through if we know that you're going to be there. Um, if, if we're making ourselves, building ourselves up in our most holy faith that you will be there and you will never leave us or forsake us if we are faithful and we were willing to stick with you. You're going to stick with us and you're going to provide 
I'm sure wonderful blessings and, and things that we can't even uh, imagine at this point in those times, in those moments, in the last second that we're going to need to be provided with something. We trust that you will do that to get us through and keep us faithful because we know we are not of this world. You, you said it. We believe it. Um, our kingdom is yet to come and it's glorious and it's glorious and you're glorious and you're worth it all. Thank you for uh, providing everything you have, even this technology to let us do this and gather. Because you're worth every millisecond of our time and every cell in our body and every breath that we breathe. So help us to do that now and f- until you come. Maranatha in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right, friends. Let me post that and uh, we'll see you when you get there. Until next time. End Time Church will always be here for you. Get the app, please, fellowship with us. If this has blessed you, we are brought to you by your offerings alone. Please go to the Give button and give whatever you can. Thanks so much, guys.